Underneath it all, who are we sexually? Bible, cufflinks, and stilettos, with Giselle St. James. For mature audiences only. Watch Bible, Cufflinks, and Stilettos on Carib Vision, midnight on Mondays, and Friday nights at 11 p.m. Sponsored by Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. Welcome, 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 everybody, and happy, happy Monday. Listen, I've been gone for a minute. Now I'm back with all the niceness come on welcome welcome if you are joining me for the first time thank you for choosing bible cufflinks and stilettos i know that you could have done anything with your monday night listen to me you could have probably sacrificed our goods but here you are with me and everybody else tuned in to one of the nicest show out there where we talk about the real things them and the nice something them and tonight will be no different listen to me i've been gone for a while and in the time that i've been gone a lot of things have happened a lot of things have happened um i lost my grandmother i was robbed yes and I also celebrated my birthday. You see, right there, right there? I celebrated my birthday. And I am a whopping somewhere in the 3 0 region. <laughs> yeah, somewhere there. That's where I am. But beyond all of that, it just goes to show that all of your battles your struggles it only makes you stronger because listen to me with everything that i went through i thought i wasn't going to continue the show i thought i was going to be out for the count but you know what god had a different plan and all he did was continue to refine me and to strengthen me throughout every single adversity I face. So here I am, ready for talk the things them, the same way them supposed to go. I want to hide none. I want to pretty up nothing. So listen to me, rock and come in, rope in, call a friend, tell a friend, friend for come. Listen to me, tell your husband, tell your wife, say it's time to watch Bible cufflinks and stilettos. As you know, I am your host, Giselle St. James, seven-time erotic romance author, counselor, and just all our own vibes bringer. It's me, you don't know. I'm here with you every single Monday at 9 p.m. EST, 8 p.m. Jamaica time. And you also know that we are on Caribbean Mondays at 12 p.m. and Fridays at 11 p.m. As you know, the objective of this show is to have open and honest, real, practical conversations that surround sexual issues, concerns, and practices, especially amongst our faith-based couples. And this is all just for better relationship outcomes. Listen to me, gentle people. We know sex is not the magic one, the answer to all our problems. But listen to me, we don't know say good sex help. It help, don't say it. Yeah, man, it helps to make marriages nice. So we're ready to talk some things here tonight. Remember, like, subscribe, listen to me, comment, talk with me, you know. We're in this together because of answer this age-old question. Should size matter i am ready to measure up this conversation listen to me my all of marula i have marula you know my come prepared so we're ready for measure up the conversation and talk the things them the same way them supposed to go listen to me we are hoping that tonight will be just as exciting and just as informative as it's always been so let me tell y'all once more rock and come in rock and come in rock and come in 
so that we can have this important conversation. Coming up in our show tonight, welcome, welcome, eWorship Connect. Yes, I'm here and I'm ready to measure. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so tonight's show, we're hoping to explore the age old question Should size matter? This has been a sore point of contention for our males. And you know what? I want to include our females too. And tonight we'll be focusing on the body <laughs> and the body aspect of the size spectrum tonight. And for those persons joining me in the States, in Canada, who don't know what I mean by body, I don't mean body as in like my friend. I'm talking about body as in the size of your member, okay? The size of the penis. That's what we're talking about tonight, okay? Now, Spice recently came out with her song, Tip Measure. <laughs> and most men are just so up in arms about the whole lyrics and the video. But you know what? It's being touted that the men who are protesting and talking all sorts of things against the song are those ones suffering from <clears throat> minisculitis. My word. Okay, that's my word. Minisculitis. They are suffering from minisculitis and that is why they have all sorts of negative things to say about Miss Spice and her song. Then we have our big bone women who often feel insecure in the bedroom because of how men and women alike have made them feel about their roles, like the ones that I have, and their thickness, especially in the case where a man might have met and married his woman slim, and then after marriage and kids, her weight balloons. All of a sudden, Mr. Sir, I'm disgusted and I can't have sex with her and I feel like I'm no longer enjoy sex with her. Hello? These things help to contribute to that, to that negative body, body image that most of us women have. Not to mention uh, the height requirement to ride certain rides. Hello? Hello? There needs to be a height requirement, okay? Now... Is it fair? Is it? Is it? So ladies and gentlemen, in YouTube and TV land, should size really matter, especially in a godly marriage? What say you? Does this focus on body and penis size contribute to body insecurity that so many people suffer from? This and more tonight, on this episode of Bible Cufflinks and Stilettos. Listen to me. Let us reason together. Join the conversation. I'm talking to you. Come through. Join the conversation, all right? Because I want y'all to talk to me tonight. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Yvonne Franklin. Or whoever, I don't know. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. I, and I'm seeing so many persons. Thank you. Thank you for joining with me tonight. Now, before we get into the meat of things, pun intended, pun not intended, <laughs> let us do our self-check exercise. All right, as you know, we're always ready for the mental health to get it right. And a part of that is just to do a self-check exercise to make sure that when you come here to Bible Cufflinks and Stilettos, you're coming with the right frame of mind. So the first thing I want you to do is to take a deep breath and release. Take a deep breath. And release. And then I want you to repeat after me, whether you want to say it loudly or quietly to yourself. I am present and in the moment. I welcome the information that will be presented tonight with an open mind. I am committed to pleasing my partner. I am ready to learn 
and to practice. I will comment and share my experiences to enhance tonight's session. I am ready. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Because I'm ready. Are you ready? Let us go. So before we go into the show, 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 of course, you know, it's Bible cufflinks and stilettos. So there's two things that we have left to do. So we're going to be looking at our scripture and it's taken tonight from 1 Corinthians 7 verses 3 to 6 and I'm using the NIV and it reads, the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife's body does not belong to her alone but also to her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to his wife. Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. Let me repeat. 1 Corinthians 7 verses 3 to 6 in the NIV goes, The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to his wife. Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again, so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. Lord, we come before you as always committing ourselves, but also committing our relationships, committing our marriages to you, Lord God. I pray that you will continuously bless it, Lord God, and I pray that you will just increase it in pleasure and enjoyment for our couples. Lord God, I pray that each and every person who will be tuned in tonight, that Lord God, you will do Lord for them a special blessing. Lord God, a special breakthrough is there for them. Lord God, so that they will shed the negativity, shed the stereotypes, and Lord God, walk in freedom of body and penis. Lord God, help us to appreciate what you have blessed us with. And Lord God, use it not just for your glory. And we're not just talking about your glory, but Lord God, to pleasure and bring enjoyment to the spouse that you gave us. Lord God, I declare right now that couples will begin to enjoy their sexual relationships together and that Lord God, orgasms will be achieved in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray even now for those persons who are tuning in, who has body insecurity, Lord God, I pray God, that you will just help them to see that they are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made and that Lord Jesus, you made them so special and they are a gift to their spouse. Thank you once again for all that will be done in tonight's session. In your mighty name I pray, amen. Amen, 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 boy. Satin, Satin, thank you so much for joining me tonight. All right, so listen to me now. Let's go on with our presentation. So I'm using our source, healthline.com, and it says, in a recent study by the Journal for the Scientific Study of Religion, and this is not from Healthline, must, I must say. I'm just looking at my research that I did. So it is saying it's found that a majority of evangelical men living predominantly in the Bible Belt states in America believe that they need larger penises to fulfill their Christian masculinity. Meaning, 
Men in that region not only feel that having a larger penis is important, but that their penis does not measure up. Who? A lot of men also believe that their penis is where their masculinity comes from. They are not a man unless they have a certain size. Ooh. Can you believe that? Now, surprisingly, not much study is present in the size debate for women. Most discourse and statistics relate to men's penis size and its ability to satisfy. Which for us here at Bible Cufflings and Stilettos, we know that it is lopsided and unfair to our men. All right? There is so much pressure for our men to measure up when, uh, let's be honest, it takes more than the presence of a tool to do the work. Hello? It takes more than the presence of a tool to actually do the work you want it to do. <laughs> Some women, they worry about the size of their vagina and how it affects sexual pleasure, especially after having a baby. And we know that this is a concern amongst many, many women. Yes, oh yes, oh yes. But the pressure to be tight and snug and good is one that is perpetuated by many dancehall artists and many people out there. When you hear a dancehall artist like Mr. Lex, when him tell listeners say, a good old do it, mm? or Vibes Cartel when he sings, it tighty, ma fausitine, or like Sen Shensia when she sang in her song, Good Comfort, tight hole and me something fat, and I could go on and on and on. Okay, not to mention those songs that tout the male genitalia as something that ought to be long till it been like banana or having it being described as an anaconda. These stereotypes have permeated mainstream culture and have filtered into the Christian mindset, forcing us to ask the question even amongst our sweetly saved couples. Does size matter? Now, according to multiple studies, it has been noticed that many marriages break because of the ineffectiveness and inadequacies of men in bed, as our women sometimes claim. According to Joshua Moangani, in his blog post, most ladies think that having a big and long size can easily bring them to sexual climax, i.e. an orgasm. He says many have longed for such, the, such as they pity themselves because of their husband's small size. Now, the Bible is silent on the matter of phallic and vaginal sizes. But you know what? Science has come through on a clutch. Science has really come through for us. Now, according to Healthline.com, one, when it comes to girth, the average size is 3.66 inches for a flaccid penis. So let me see if I can get it here. So this is three points anywhere around here. This is the size of when it should be flaccid, meaning it is not um, erect. So this should be the size, 3.66 inches thereabouts, okay? That's what it should be. And then they're saying that for an erect penis, it should be 4.59 inches. So maybe somewhere around here. So, gentlemen, <clears throat> think about what you've got going on. Think about what you've got going on and let me know if you measure up. Let me know if you measure up. And just in case you've been feeling a little bit insecure, just in case you've been feeling insecure, hello? You are right. You are right with your four inches. 
You all right with your 4.5. You all right with the five inches. Hello? You're cool. You're good. Uh? You're nice. Uh? Because science says that 4.59 inches is the average for an erect penis. A 2020 review of research on penis size found that the average length of an erect penis is between 5.1 inches. So maybe somewhere around here. That should be it. 5.1 inches. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And also 5.5. So it's between these two in 2020. They're saying that's the average size. So once again, just in case you felt like you weren't really blessed, science is telling you that you are blessed. Now, let me go on to say, <clears throat> all the research pegged the average length of a flaccid penis at actually 3.61 inches. And let me tell you, an erect penis of 6.3 inches falls into the 95th percentile, meaning that only five, just five out of 100 men would have a penis longer than 6.3 inches. Let me get my ruler. So it's just about here. Just about here. Okay. So where you stand? Where you think you stand? You average or you above average? I feel like a lot of you are above average and you did not even know. Okay, likewise, an erect penis of 3.94 inches is in the fifth percentile, meaning that only five out of 100 would have a penis shorter than 3.94 inches. So you see that? You, you, you probably blessed and you don't even know that you're blessed. Huh? Now, according to WebMD, because, you know, we did the men, so we got to do the females right now. A study from Masters and Johnson in the 1960s found that vagina lengths, unstimulated, meaning that when they are not aroused, range from 2.75 inches. Let me look at that. So it is probably somewhere around here. 2.75 inches when it's not aroused. When she's not aroused, 2.75 inches. Now, and this is 2.75 to 3 and a quarter inches. So maybe somewhere around here. Okay. Now that's the that's the depth. Let me put it this way. Maybe you'll understand it's a little better, or maybe this. I don't even know what way to put it to make you understand. Maybe this way. I don't know. But that is how, in terms of D, lengthwise, that a woman is when she's not aroused. Now, when she's aroused, when she's stimulated, it is increased to 4.25 inches. So somewhere around here. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. 4.25 inches when she is lubricated, when she's wet and all of that, it expands. So it's 4.25 to 4.75. So somewhere around here, that's when she's aroused. Now, ladies and gentlemen, while both the penis and vagina size, they, they can vary. These two amazing organs, they usually accommodate each other perfectly. Perfectly. Now, think of a socket and a plug. That's how well they fit. Yes, sometimes it might be a little loose, but sometimes we have to do a little thing to make it fit again. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get it, you get it. Now, this is a mystery. It is the perfect work of God. And listen to me, let us just take a moment to thank God for what he created in a penis and a vagina. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. Now tonight we will not argue as to whether the cottage is too big or the occupant is too small. 
We're not going to argue about that tonight. Tonight's show will explore the idea of size and how it has weakened the experience of pleasure in marriage and relationships. Tonight, I also should be having Apostle Faith in the house tonight. Hello, Apostle. Hello. How have you been? How have you been? I'm doing great. Thank oh you. Oh, my goodness. What, uh, what an argument we're up tonight. <laughs> what an argument we're up tonight. When I saw the topic in the chat. I'm like, listen. <laughs> I had to pull out my ruler for this because. Mm, Listen. Seriously. Seriously. Listen. Look here. Are we for real here? I, I mean, I mean, oh, are we for real? Are we for real? Of course. Real? Is he we're real. Pastors are concerned. <laughs> are you serious? Oh, yes, man. When you said pastors, I'm like, that's a shocker to me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking they was even having any sex. <laughs> I'm talking about their wives. I'm talking about wives now. I'm screaming. <laughs> I am screaming. <laughs> I am screaming, screaming, screaming. screaming. I have, you have me cracking up over here. You Listen have me cracking to me. up. I'm dying. It, it 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 is so. It is such a a deep conversation because it has been so negative when we think about sizes. And I really wanted to highlight the whole idea of the body size and the whole penis size, vagina size. I wanted to explore all of those things because when we think about how we, we, we approach sex, a lot of us come from a physical perspective and a physical point of view. So of course we want a, a good package and it's not just a package in terms of hey with but it's also a package in terms of the person you know is the person skinny you know with the preferences and all of that and and when i look at the fact lady faith that sometimes men and women they contribute to the body negativity the body negativity because we don't try to appreciate people for what they bring to the table and we don't try to use what them have and all of them things there we make people feel bad for what them have. What do you think about that? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please join us next time for the continuation of this episode. Stay tuned.